Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. Welcome to yet another edition of International Forum. I am Wilson on Marshall. Today is all about Afghanistan today. Yeah, the aftermath of Taliban government. So many negative things have been emanating from that country since the advent of the government headed by Taliban's. When it's all started, you get to hear jubilation from a particular sect, a particular religion. Why some members of that same religion are skeptical about what will happen in that country. And right now, according to many reports, it's like, like hell on earth. Anyway, my analyst will be the one to throw more light on this. Before that, let's go around, you know, the world, bringing you stories, making round. First and foremost, let's move straight down to DR Congo, where they have cases of human trafficking. Yes, the U.S. This is DR Congo uh, cities as a uh, uh, ivory uh, uh, trafficking. Uh, begging you your pardon because right now it's like ivory talking about uh, elephant talks, rhino talks, and the rest of them becoming quite scarce. And this time around, the DR Congo seems to be the hotspot for such business. You know, we're talking about extinction of some animals, of which the world is trying to preserve some animals, but some poachers really want to make millions. Uh, some tusk or some ivory can even climb close to, close to billions, depends on the scarcity of such species of animals. And the U.S. take it upon themselves to be the police of the world, to even protect animals, to protect all the animals that are having this fear of being extinct. Let's see if this onslaught by the U.S. on uh, uh, the Arukongo citizens taking part in this kind of, you know, trade. If it will bring it to a stop, or better still, bring it down to uh, the barest minimum. Now let's move over to U.S. reopening borders to vaccinated travelers after 20 months. Yesterday, you to see the first batch of banned travelers. Now, since they've been certified and they've been uh, vaccinated, they can come in. But this vaccination is causing serious trouble in the U.S. Popular actor Ice Cube yeah choose to walk out on a moving set because uh he was asked to show to them that he's vaccinated of course he doesn't want to get vaccinated he doesn't need any needle in his body he doesn't want any form of vaccine and uh he just walked out of the movie set many americans are protesting against his vaccination why some that have been vaccinated are protesting against those that are recently vaccinated saying that they have to go get vaccinated as a case of litigation in some parts of u.s where uh, some unvaccinated individual went to court to stop the u.s government from forcefully vaccinating federal workers vaccinating company workers vaccinating private firms saying vaccination is not by force but right now in u.s way to come in you have to show proof that you have been vaccinated against the coronavirus to prevent its spread that is what they are really really talking about now let's move over to afghanistan in afghanistan right now is going to form part of our discussion today people citizens in afghanistan that depends on human smugglers to smuggle them out of afghanistan i mean paying to be smuggled or like then would have just come they just like, you know, uh, a pamper. You even pay you money to get smuggled out. But this time, if you're the video, you want to pay them to smuggle you out of Aga Afghanistan. Now, uh, that's why I say Afghanistan right now is like hell on earth. Anyway, I don't want to dive into this story because my analyst would be the one to throw more light on this. Right now, we'll go uh, on a break. When we return, it's all about Afghanistan today. The aftermath of the Taliban government. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back to talk some more on this particular topic. Thank you so much for staying tuned. It's all about Afghan today, aftermath of Taliban government, what we are really going through. With me here in the studio to talk about this, I have two legal practitioners, yes, yeah, human rights activists, public affairs commentators. When they start talking about international affairs, you feel as if they're there in that particular country where these things are happening. Let me start my introduction from my extreme left. Join me to welcome Barrister Emmanuel Obakbalo. Welcome to International Forum, Barrister. Good afternoon, Nigerians, and good afternoon, Wilson. All right, and of course, in very close to him, my immediate left is Barrister Osaho Osasua. Welcome to International Forum. 
I appreciate the call. Thanks for having me. Right. Always my pleasure. Some people saw it coming. But as I say, the Taliban government is the best for Afghan. A particular sect, religious sect, they were happy about what transpired. Why some minute personalities in that same sect are not really happy about what is going on? It does no board to what we have today in Afghanistan, where people need to pay to be smuggled out of Afghanistan. You get to hear the case also of parents selling their girl child just to have money to survive. You get to hear about cases where you have government that are not tolerant uh, to the belief of you know some of their citizens government that is of the opinion that they want to go back to the way they used to be in terms of religion. Barista Imamel Obakolo, what do you feel about Afghan today? Uh, Af Afghanistan is a very small uh, country surrounded by Uzbekistan, India, Pakistan, and some of those uh, Arab nations, so to speak. Uh, the present situation in Afghanistan today is not one that the same thing we want to be or go to. Uh, going back to memory lane, 20, to be precise, in 20, uh, 2001, when uh, Osama bin Laden struck and assaulted the United States of America, what is today known as 9 11, and uh, destroyed that. Uh, gigantic flamboyant building, World Trade Center. And uh, since then, the United States began to search for this man. Before you know, the man ran to Afghanistan. And before you know, the Taliban embraced him. And uh, before I go further, even the United States of America, they have a hand in grooming the Taliban of today for reasons best known to them. But today, the little puppy they once groomed has become a voracious, Bulldog that is haunting them and haunting every other peace loving people of the world. So, in uh, when uh, Joe Biden became the president of America in April 2021 this year, he made an announcement that uh, they were going to remove move the troops, United States troops in Afghanistan, and uh, by May. He now announced that about 90% uh, of the troops were almost uh, completed, 95% to be precise, at the, at the, at the, towards the early part of September 2021, they had only 6,500 troops, 650, sorry, mm -hmm. troops in Afghanistan. And before you know it, the Taliban came in, they began to take over territories, and finally, they took over Kabul and took over the presidential villa. And uh, the presidential Ashraf Ghani fled. And immediately he fled the Afghanistan National Defense and Security Forces collapsed and fell before the Taliban. And Taliban took over the government. Before that, you would, well, one would also uh, remember that some time ago, to be precise, by 2014, Afghan were in power in uh, Afghanistan. And that was the time the United States of America made an application that, look, we want to enter and get to Osama bin Laden. They refused. And the America came with their expertise, military expertise. And before you know it, Osama bin Laden was picked like a rabbit from the hole. And the man was killed. And that was when they now entered into an agreement with the United States of America. Again, that look, they were going to uh, be peaceful. They were going to abide to the terms and conditions of the agreement so made. But we do know that the present situation in Afghanistan today is worrisome and terrible. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see the Afghans can no longer tolerate it because some of them are afraid. One has Kim Musaf said that the, he acknowledged to the fact that Afghans don't believe in the Taliban. Because the first time they came into power, there was so much restriction. Women cannot go out without a, ma a male companion, all of those. But the sit present situation we see just now is like they want to convince and confuse the people so that the people can embrace them. But the people are still scared. They are still afraid. And that is the reason why you see all that is happening now. 
If okay. I am to be in Afghanistan, I will also pay my way out. Yeah. You pay your way out? Yes. Bryce of Samos as well, you heard him, he gave us a kind of uh, what happened um, in the past, some few events that are shipping Afghanistan today, he talked about uh, uh, the Taliban coming up, being trained by the U.S. and all of that. What are your feelings about Afghanistan today? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me begin by saying that um, our people, wherever they are, ultimately get the kind of government they deserve. Yes, uh, just like the great uh, uh, John Ross wrote that our conception of justice must be justified by our co that, that our conception of justice must be justified by the conditions of our lives or they are not justified at all. It was making the argument that um, that um, any system that is operational almost always reflects the inhabitants, the denizens or citizens of that particular place. Why am I saying all this? Um, we tend to think uh, the Taliban's are at one pose and the Afghan people are at another pole. But if you look at it critically, you must understand that the Taliban's are Afghanistan's and Afghanistan's are Taliban's. It, 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 it is the system that produced the Taliban's and that system is not totally abhorrent to the average Afghan. Believe it or not, you must understand that the, it was the, the Taliban's, to a very large extent, reflect the Afghan society. And, and, and listen, and 52 countries coalition against the Taliban's. For over 20 years, they couldn't defeat them, and they had to go. That shows there is local backing, strong some backing, are. some are somewhere for the Taliban's, that the Taliban's are reflecting, that they are echoing. That they are bold enough to articulate in words, so to speak, what the average Afghan thinks at that. That was the argument I also made for Trump, that the average Republican has always been who he is, that Trump came and was able to articulate their fears, to give, to give boldness and expression to what they have always felt, their prejudices, their fears, and their, and their indo, idiosyncrasies. So that was that. So today, they are getting what they deserve. You, 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 my co discussion was talking about you brewing the monster and then the monster now overwhelming you. But in the first place, you, 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 you grew him. Just like Saddam Hussein said, he said, children are, uh, he said, troubles are like little children. By not see them, they grow. And, and, and that's the way it is. So the Taliban are who they are. They, they have never changed. Even when they, were in the, when they were there in the late 90s, before they were toppled in early 2000, 2001, they, they still remain who they are. And the people knew that this is the Taliban. Yet, yet, after spending trillions and trillions of US dollars, after 52 countries being arrayed against these people, they won. Whether you like it or not, the Taliban, they won the war. And they know it. And the average Afghan also know that the Taliban won. That is why they are in power today. So we must give them that respect. So it, that, it, it, that it is where we have insurgent that comes to power in every part of the world. Don't think, don't make that mistake to think that these people are, the, the, these are these trade ones, the sheep that trade away from the food. No. Those people represent, to a very large extent, the thinking, the dynamics, the thought processes, the, the frame of reference and the scale of preference of the average Afghan, you can see it in the Taliban. So what they are getting today is what they lost, is what they wanted. They so they, they, they could better. Yes, that, that is it. In every system, everybody cannot be one side. But I tell you that these people represent the that's why I say largely they represent the majority of the Afghan people. So don't think they are demons. Don't think they are the bad guys. No. They represent, they, 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 are, they see them to a large extent as the protector of their faith and their belief, what they hold dear. We cannot see all think like the Westerners. We cannot all think like the Americans. These people understand that we live in a, very, in, in, a, in, a, in, in, in a world where we have uh, different opinions. People think that I think this way. I will not compare you to think this way. That my thoughts will never be superior to your thoughts. I must always learn to respect your home, where you are coming from. The, what, whatever you name you call your God, or whatever, uh, whatever your dreams and aspirations are, I must never think you are primitive, or you, these guys have gotten it wrong. So what we must learn is to respect people's opinion. And the average Afghan, the point I'm making is that the average Afghan and the average Taliban are almost always the same thing. 
almost always the same thing. Now let's take a look at the situation starvation. Uh, the smuggling of persons paying for themselves to be smuggled this time around. And of course, this aspect of selling humans to survive in Afghanistan. Did they really bargain for what is happening? No, that, that is the reason why you see some of the, the minority uh, uh, the minority in Afghanistan are against the system of government. Come to think of it, we'll see. One would ask, what type of system is the Taliban giving or practicing in Afghanistan? What type of system? Is it theocracy? Is it democracy? What is the name? What is, what, how, how can they frame uh, a name to give to the system of government. The government is very oppressive. And that is why there is a mox they call the blue mox close to Kabul, the capital. Before now, when they came to power in the early 19s and uh, early 2014, women don't go to that mox. But now, in order to convince the people, in order to confuse the people that, look, we want to bring to bear democracy tenants, the tenants of democracy in Afghanistan. It's okay, let women go to the mocks in the morning, then the men will go in the remainder yeah, part of okay. the day. So all of this, yet the people are not convinced. And mind you also, now you have other religion in Afghanistan, unlike what they used to think or feel that you only have Islam in Afghanistan. It's not like that any longer. When the, the invasion of the United States of America and other countries who came into uh, 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 Afghanistan, as it were, from 2001 to 2014, then 2020, 2021, before they now left, some persons must have changed their religion. And now those persons, you don't expect those persons to now bear and tolerate what they have, uh, the Taliban, the kind of uh, government the Taliban will now run in Afghanistan. So it's some of all those persons who are now saying, look, there's starvation. Because the system of government in Afghanistan just now cannot address that starvation. It cannot address the economy. Because a, a, an oppressive government cannot, op cannot address anything that has to do with human life. There's nothing like human rights in Afghanistan. And all of these persons, when the US and other states came, other countries came into Afghanistan. They made the people to understand that, look, you have a right. You have a right to life. You have a right to freedom of association. You have a right to freedom of religion. You have a right to this. You have a right to that. So now the people have that at the back of their mind. That, look, so I have a right as a human being. Then I want to exercise that right. But Taliban, as a system of government, will come and say, no, you don't have a right. The only right you have is subject to we, what we tell you how we want you to behave, how we want you to think, how we want you to do things. So those persons are now saying, no, we have a right. It is written somewhere in the books that we have right. So for that reason, hence we have right, and the Taliban don't want us to exercise that right. Let's pay our way out of this, this country. And that is why you see the influx of people, the exodus of people out of Afghanistan just now. And like I did say in my, in my introduction, that look, if I were to be in Afghanistan, I would also pay my way out. How it is going to cost me, that is not my business. I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't bother myself with that. But all I want to know is to see how I can pay my way out of Afghanistan. Because oppressive government, Government that treats people, that you dehumanize people, government that will make people to feel less than animals. Because even in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan the cattles, the camel, are well respected and taken care of more than human beings. <laughs> so it's a terrible situation just now in Afghanistan. And I think the United States, who groomed the Taliban, should also intervene. It is not enough. We'll, for come, them to to that. Their we'll come to that intervention. But now, you, you said the Taliban are part of the people. And of course, the, uh, uh, Afghans, the, the, the Afghans, so to speak, they are also a Taliban uh, uh, inclined. If that is the case, how come they, they are experiencing this exodus of you know, citizens from Afghanistan in large numbers? Yes, thank you, uh, Wilson. Uh, I will be, I will not be truthful at all to sit here uh, and make a case for the Taliban. Uh, they are a terrible people, if you ask me. Uh, but I also know, as, I also know very well that the West is not that righteous too. Uh, that sometimes uh, we, we always, al almost always in the third world, there, there's a way of 
of we always demonize our own. Uh, at the back of our minds, we think these guys are better than us. Uh, we think these guys are the good guys, and uh, we are not. We are, we are getting there. But, but look at the pages of the books. Look at history. What does history teach us? The history is full of of the bleach bones of hypocrisy, of death, of lies, of betrayers perpetrated by the West. So when you see today, you look at your screen, watch your CNN, watch your force, watch those. You, you see that it, 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 they paint the chaotic scene in Afghanistan. And, and, and you think it's that bad. Yes, if it's that bad, then they, they have a big chunk of blame in it. Why is Afghanistan the way it is today? And this is a material moment that we talk. It is, it is big, largely because the West has frozen about $10 billion of the Afghan people's money because they don't want to deal with the Taliban. That is why they are in the mess that they are today. And even before the collapse of the last, uh, uh, of the Afghani uh, government, government. The, 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 the issues, the economic issues have started coming up. They, they weren't able to pay. Do you know that before now, it is the, the, it, it is the US government and uh, some foundations, some NGOs that were paying the salaries of uh, even the Afghan ministry and the Afghan civil servants. The economy itself wasn't working. And it wasn't sustainable. And the West and the US was never going to be there and, and carry that body. That is why both Trump and uh, Biden, Republicans, and they agreed. This is an unwinnable war. We are just losing so much money. The ascendancy of Shena. Shena is, he, uh, has grown and become big because it is spending so little. It is not burdening itself with. So, you know the trillions of dollars the West has spent in Afghanistan and they needed to go. And that's why they left. So we must understand that there are a big part because they are sitting on top of the money that could almost miraculously transform Afghanistan today. That is why we have the problem we have. That is, that is one of the reasons. It might not be all the reasons. It's a big part of the reason. It's we, a major we, yes. part of the reason. We must also understand. When he was talking about, um, my colleague was talking about um, uh, uh, the Taliban's being oppressive, and uh, that the, the valuing uh, uh, cattle, cattle more yeah. than uh, human life. I don't know about that. But I do know, I do know, we see, that less about, that about uh, uh, only 100 years ago, we were women in the streets of London somewhere in Miami, somewhere in Washington, able to vote for a very long time. These good guys, they didn't even see the woman as what something that she could go and vote. It took decades, centuries of fight to put the consciences of these good guys to allow their ladies to go and cast their vote. The good you see, guys. Yes. You see, the world is evolving. We must understand that people are changing. That there are dynamics of, of so, the, 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 so we must also let these people, let these so um, uh, people who are not getting it right, let them also learn. All right, are you just don't want to go for a break? We'll return, we'll continue with this discussion. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Studios are well, is a live studio, so just get to hear all that talks of context uh, when we're talking about the topic on the ground but we are still very much on course on international forum take a look at afghanistan today the aftermath over the uh, uh taliban government you, you before we went to that break you heard that was also as we were talking about the i will have put it now yeah the money of afghan citizens frozen and yeah, that is one of the reasons why they are where they are today. Talking about economic downturn, the economy has no dive. Not is no that it has no dive to the extent that surviving right now in Afghanistan take extra, extra grace for you to survive. And many are beginning to find their way out, paying for them to be smuggled out of Afghanistan. I, I, I mean, I, I will come back to you now. You just now he said the chunk of the blame should be on the shoulders of these so-called good guys. Yes, Americans and of course our allies that refused to release the money uh, that was, first of all, Ian Mark, take care of some strategic ministry in Afghanistan. Uh, from what he also said, it's like the US and their allies, they don't want running the economy of Afghanistan. As the Taliban took over, everything ceased. Do you think that is the reason why they are where they are today? Yes, it's a contributory factor. It's part of uh, the conspiracy to make Afghanistan the way she is today yes. is contributed by the Western power, so to speak. But also, the Western power is putting up an argument now that 
So far, the United States says so far they have spent one hundred and five billion dollars. Billion dollars. Yes, and that, that is affecting the economy of uh, the United the States of America, and that is one of the reasons why they are withdrawing their troops from Afghanistan. Now, you know the the Western world, particularly the Western powers. When they came with, their, with this doctrine of colonialism, they didn't come because they want Africa or other parts of the third world, so to speak, quote and unquote, to develop and grow more than them. They didn't do that. They were mere businessmen. Even when they came with the gospel, they had the gospel in one hand, then the whole business uh, uh, principles on the other hand. And that is also what they went to Afghanistan to do. It's, it's, it, is not a, it is not a hide and seek game. They are not even hiding it to tell you that, look, we are not here. But what they also want to let the world to know, and particularly in the case in subjects now, Afghanistan, is that every Afghan has a right. Unlike when the Taliban came up and took over Afghanistan, 